Now it's time for the worktops. Got my jig. I'm going to skip filming it because there's nothing I can teach you on this. When I put the this unit and this unit together, that gap was parallel. So that is straight, or square should I say. So I'll just be working off the pins. For the male and for the female, oh, that one, sorry. And I won't be using the distance marks. I'll put a bit of masking tape there, mark where that is. And that's where I'll mark, I'll make me cut from, from that distance there. Worktop bolts and some biscuits. That socket's a bit low, but the spark is coming back. Right, that went okay. That looks like it'll come together quite well. These bits of tape, I just put a square mark just to make sure that my jig was sitting square on there. Like I say, I worked to a pencil line there. Just need to get some biscuits in. Just going to use my router, biscuit cutter, little bearing. That means I can get one in here. I try to get the biscuit joiner in there because the base don't want to sit in that corner. But I can get one just in there and get one in the back without taking all this out as well. But I think before I get carried away, I need to cut it to land. But I think I'm going to put the cut the sink in as well. Then glue it all together. The sink's going there. I've just drawn around it. I'll come in 10 mil, or that width anyway. Draw a line. That's why I'll cut it, and I'll drill the corners and cut it all around. And I keep getting reminded that this saw's got a scribe function, where the blade just goes down just a little bit. So I'll use that. I always forget he's got it. So, four holes drilled in the corners. I've got a line that's 10 mil in. I'll just cut it between the two. I think I'm going to do that back one first. So I don't want to be leaning on this skinny bit of timber. Right, excellent. So much easier with that saw. I haven't taken the tape off yet, but... It's quite a clean cut. Cleaner than it would have been with jigsaw anyway, that way. Young lads, you've got it so much easier now. Excellent. Get this glued together. Get the sink in. Nearly done then. Doors and handles. Oh, and keep board.
Looks like it. Sinks in. Some plumbing to do. Get the door and the skirting on. Oh, no draw. Cool. Life's too easy sometimes, isn't it? Right, not the prettiest bit of plumbing, but it works and it doesn't leak. And I even got the hot and the cold the right way around. These are good for cutting the pipe. Rothenberger, I think they are. But they leave a nice clean finish. Anyway, like I say, that all works, don't leak. Now I'm just sorting this window out. This is just a fraction higher than a single tile. I'll take it to bits. Oh, hold on. See, it's higher than the window. If I go outside, you can see that probably look a bit shit. See that. Some people might leave that, but what I'm going to do is black it out. It's called shadow gapping in shop fitting. You've got a gap, and sometimes you can see you can see the thing behind. If you don't want to see that, you paint it black before you put your panels on. So what I'm going to do is paint the other side of that black. What I use is this stuff, it's a matte black, it's a fence treatment, so it's waterproof, exterior, but it dries really fast, and it goes on very easily, very black, so, turn that off, this is just a piece of plywood, I'll run sander over it just to scuff it up a bit so the tiles stick a bit better. Then I've got bits of wood, a bit of ply, like I say, I'll paint that, paint the back edge of the windowsill, window board it is actually, and then glue and screw all these bits of timber down, and get them straight. I'll have to pack them up just a little bit just so that they run in with this first piece of ply. I'll leave them to dry for a little while but what's important is I need to wash the window first give this a good clean first because you're not going to be able to get to it afterwards so that window's clean it's filthy on the outside but it doesn't matter I'm just screwing, gluing my timbers down and then the last timber I'll pin that board on that blackout board I'm not bothered if it flaps about a bit on the bottom it won't because it'll be hard up against here but I want the top fixed alright that's all glued and pinned in place there we go outside So you can still see it. But it don't look as bad now. They do this sort of thing when they put suspended ceilings in above tall windows. You know when they have a, like a, a piece like that, suspended ceiling, black it out so you don't see it from outside. I'm going to get on with tiling, not staying. I'm either going to tile around it or drop it off the wall and tile behind it. Probably just tile up to it. Alright, nearly done. Got 
got these handles to go on. It came with the with the bundle. But let me see those little holes, little marks where the handles go. None of them line up. So we decided to go with that one. And wherever. So I made myself a little jig. It's sort of double sided almost. So that will go on there. On the outside. And drill from the outside. And then I've got another board here to go on the inside here as a as a backer. Stop it breaking out. Nice neat all on the inside. Uh, I just went round and drilled them all. I'll go around putting the handles on now. I've got a few pencil marks where I was working this one out. This is acetone. Good for cleaning, is that? Before I put some silicone around here, that'll be the last thing that I do. But before I put some silicone around here, I'll give it all a wipe with some acetone. Just get any grease, and the silicone will stick nicely. The good thing about this stuff, it doesn't leave a white residue, like white spirit does. Probably just wash these off though actually. But it gets any excess glue off.
Oops. Six to three fifty three eight to I would have liked to just stick this on, no fixings in the face, but I don't think whatever I'd find a bit strong enough. It's a bit manky this door, it's been polished as well. But I've got these countersink rivets, little ones. And a countersink bit, just have to take care. Only little. Just very slightly proud with them countersink bits, whatever it is. With these, it's just too easy on this thin sheet. Too easy, just go too far. I'll get some more in. Two more, then I can take these clips out. I'm going to put two down in the bottom corners as well. Then I can take this tape off and take the cover film off. Big ugly shiny thing but not a lot of choice. And it'll tarnish down a bit. I've got a simple one, just a kickboard to go on the other side. A kick plate. 
So this one's going on inside like that. I forgot to mention that these Clicos require a 3.2 mil bit. Bought these but found good. Uh, my countersinks and my rivets uh, 3.2 mil as well. So happy days there. This bit I keep with these all together. Once upon a time that box was full. I keep breaking them or stealing them for something else. Anyway, I'll get this one on. The rivet guns get a bit old, old and tired like me. So it's got a nail holding it together. I'd like to get an air warm, but I don't do enough of that. You're better off starting at the centre of a thin sheet like this and working your way out. If you start in the middle, you might find that you've got a, a bulb, a bit in the middle, a bit that sticks out. Start from the middle, then you're like spreading it out almost. Like that. Like I said, like I've written, I ended up putting some timber on there. I didn't show you, but they properly butchered through here. Just cut through it with a sabre saw, I think. I don't know what all this is. Feels like the plastic's still on it. It is in places. So you hear that. There's a bit down here that I noticed. Oh. There's loads of it. I pulled loads off. That's it. Got a bit of sanding to do down here that I filled. Paint it. That box is going to go up here. It's below handle height, I think. And finally, some sealant along here. Like I say, I'm going to give it a clean down with acetone. And quite often, even though I've done this shed loads of times, I put some masking tape along, but because. Sort of risking it on this, I'm not gonna. This stuff flashes off almost instantly, dries off instantly. Cut your nozzle to the size that you want. I think I want slightly bigger than that. So cut it back at a slight point. Sort of says this is going to go tits up. Little notches where it goes into the tiles, but you try touching it up, it's when you make a mistake. Might be able to rub them in a little bit. But, like I said, it's when you make a mistake. Just keep the nozzle clean while you're doing it. in there. I've got a bit to do around here. I'll put some clear across there. Don't know if you can see it from outside. Ah, looks okay. Um, first of all, our window. Has to have a handle that doesn't lock. So we found this one online. It's got like a little bubble thing. Anyway, two screws. 
swap it over. It's a fire escape windowless. Uh, yesterday I decided I didn't want to put this on. Everything on the doors silver. And when I cut it, you'll see the foam like you did before when it was down there. So I was going to buy a, a flap for the back or a bush strip thing. But in the end, I just went with one of these. It's aluminium, but it's silvery colour. And it's a tunnel. And they're fairly easy to fit. Sometimes when you're cutting the holes, it's difficult to get that get that screw hole so close to the hole the hole that you cut. Inside, outside. So mark on here. I don't know. About there. So I'll measure down from the top. So that's my hole. Drill a couple of holes in the corners. Cut it out with jigsaw. Put a metal cutting blade in there. The jigsaw blade goes a little bit more than the depth of the door. I don't want to do it in one cut, so I don't know what's going on on the other side. I'm going to cut that separately. So I'm going to sit the jigsaw on this. Join the dots on this side. some holes there. Lost half the video files, corrupted it says. The cleaning in there at the moment, so let a bit of sweat on. I'll do a bit of filming inside. Oh.